When the people of Jannah finally enter Jannah, the first thing that they will say when they get to Jannah is, وَقَالُوا أَلْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي أَذْهَبَ عَنَّا الْحَزَنِ Alhamdulillah, finally, we have no cause to worry or grieve. Finally, there's nothing to be anxious about. Notice the first thing that comes to their mind when they enter Jannah, we don't have to be worried anymore. What does that indicate, dear brothers and sisters? What do you learn from the first thoughts that comes from the believers as they enter Jannah? May Allah make us amongst them. The first thought is what? Alhamdulillah, no more worrying. Adhaba anna al-hazan. That shows us, dear Muslims, that this world is associated with feeling anxious. This world, every step, every single part of our journey, every day, every week, every month, there's something else that's going to bring us anxiety and grief. I challenge you, dear brothers and sisters, look back at any phase of your life. When things are good, we're worried that things are going to go bad. When things are bad, we're worried things are bad. When money is wealth a lot, we're worried it's going to go away. Investment is going to go down. When money is tight, we're worried money is tight. There is no situation or scenario that we find ourselves in, except that there's some anxiety, some grief somewhere. True, not all anxiety is the same. Alhamdulillah, if we have roof over our heads and food in the pantry and fridge, Alhamdulillah, that is much better than those who do not have security and food. But still, feeling anxiety, worried, stressed out, is a part and parcel of being human. It will only be completely gone when we enter Jannah, insha'Allah ta'ala. And that is why, dear brothers and sisters, it is so important that we understand and we tackle head on the reality of stress and grief. And we make, us, make it a part of our daily discourse that it is nothing wrong to feel anxious. You don't have to feel guilty for feeling stressed out, especially in this time of pandemic. I mean, how can we not be anxious, worried, stressed out? People are dying. Everyone amongst us has had family or friends that have passed away. On top of this, we have limited socialization. Some of the things that would relieve our stress was to be with friends and family. That too has been taken away. Anxiety in terms of money. So many of us, our job situations, maybe even we're looking for jobs and in this pandemic, Allah al-Musta'an. Families being cooped up, it should bring more love. But the reality is with that love also comes tension. Sometimes between husband and wife, between father and son, it becomes worse because you're all cooped up. So no doubt, during this time frame, this pandemic, it's understandable that anxiety and stress and grief and worry is going to increase. Okay, what should we do? What does the Quran and Sunnah tell us about battling with that type of stress? First and foremost, dear Muslims, realize that the Quran tells us that people of piety can stress. People of taqwa feel anxious. The fact that you're stressed out doesn't mean you have bad iman, weak iman, lack of iman. No, this is wrong. People of taqwa and people of iman also feel stressed out. Look at the Quran, so many examples. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that the mother of Musa, she was full of grief. When she put Musa in that basket and it went away, Allah Azza wa Jal said to her, لا تخافي ولا تحزني إنا راده إليك Don't be worried. Don't stress out. She was worried and stressed out. Allah revealed to her indirectly that calm down. The greatest lady in human history, and that is Maryam, alayhi salam, one of the greatest. When she was all alone, she had no friend, no companion, and she was giving birth, she was stressed out. فَنَادَاهَا مِنْ تَحْتِهَا أَلَّا تَحْزَنِي Allah Azza wa Jal sent an angel to tell her, don't worry, she was worried. The fact that she was Maryam did not negate that she was worried. Her iman was one place and the worry was another place. They are not mutually exclusive. We learn in the Quran 
that Yaqub السلام, was stressed out. In fact, he was so stressed out that that anxiety caused him to lose his sight. Because of anxiety, his eyes did not work the way they were supposed to. They became whitened, almost blind. Min al huzn. And Yaqub is a prophet. Is anybody going to accuse Yaqub of not having faith, not having iman? Why are you stressed out, Yaqub? Don't you have iman in Allah? Feeling stress and iman are not mutually exclusive. You can have both together. We have in the Quran as well. Abu Bakr as Siddiq was worried in the Ghari Thawr, and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam calmed him down. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself said. That don't worry, Allah Azza wa Jal is with us. لا تحزن إن الله معنا. He felt that huzn inside of him, and even the Sahaba multiple times Allah Azza wa Jal tells them. Sometimes even for financial issues in the battle of Uhud, in the battle of Uhud, the Sahaba suffered. Allah says we know. One of the things was that they captured a lot of ghanima, but in front of their eyes, that ghanima was taken away. You know the battle of Uhud and what happened? Happened. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentions in the Quran, "لِكَيْ لَا تَحْزَنُوا عَلَى مَا فَاتَكُمْ." They had huzn for what left them, right? And Allah mentions in the Quran they had anxiety. You know the stock market crashes. Many of us might feel anxious. We lose our 401k. Something happens. We're gonna feel stressed. We get out of a job. There's gonna be anxiety. Let not that stress become itself a source of stress. You get my point here. Let not your stress itself cause you to be more stressed out. That why am I feeling stress? It's okay to be anxious. It's okay to be worried. You have iman, inshaAllah Taala. You can still feel worried. Our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam multiple times in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa taala tells him, "We know it hurts you what people are saying. The reputation it hurts when people say bad about you." Our Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam is consoled over half a dozen times in the Quran. وَلَقَدْ نَعْلَمُ أَنَّكَ يَضِيقُ صَدْرُكَ بِمَا يَقُولُونَ فَلَا تَحْزَنْ عَلَيْهِمْ So many times, don't feel anxiety, don't feel grief. Allah is consoling the Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam because he is hurt. His chest is in constriction because of rumor mongering. Rumor mongering, words, words do hurt. They hurt. So the first point that we learn, dear Muslims, is that feeling anxiety and stress is normal. It is natural. It's a part and parcel of not just being Muslim but being human. Every one of us is going to feel anxiety at times of tension, and we also need to look at it from a biological and a psychological standpoint. This is Allah's mechanism to put us on our guard. Imagine if we didn't feel stressed and we're losing our money; that would be a problem. Imagine what happens when you're stressed out. You focus. That's the purpose. Allah blessed us with the mechanism of stress. We all know when adrenaline flows, for example, our perception changes, our focus changes. It is a gift from Allah, which yes, it has its own negatives we have to deal with. But overall, if used properly, stress is a part of a gift that is used for our survival. For our protection, that we start thinking and focusing. When we're stressed about something, we're constantly thinking about it. Why? We need to get a solution. If we didn't get that stress, why would we think about it? So we have to understand that stress, anxiety, grief, at some level, is totally normal, and it is a part and parcel of not just being a Muslim but being a human. The second point that this leads me to is that as a Muslim, Alhamdulillah, we have tools to. Minimize stress. We have tools to help us overcome stress. Much can be said as usual. Always, we're working against the clock. One main tool in the Quran to battle against stress is our belief in qadar, in predestination. We believe that everything happens by the will of Allah and the decree of Allah. In that, we should feel a sense of calm, a sense of protection. The believer uses qadar 
to feel a consolation for anything that has happened in the past. I have said this multiple times. Qadr is never used for the future. It's used to justify or to console the past, not to justify the future. Qadr is used to console the past. Something happened. Somebody passed away. I lost my job. The stock market crashed. Anything in the past tense, you say, Qadr Allah wa ma sha'a fa'al. We don't use Qadr for the future. That's something else. Qadr is used to console the past. قُلْ لَنْ يُصِيبَنَا إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا هُوَ مَوْلَانَا Say, nothing is going to happen to me except what Allah has decreed will happen to me. And He is my Mawla. He is my protector. Whatever Allah has decreed, I put my trust in Him. The one who put me in the situation will also help me get out of it. The one who gave me this reason and this cause of feeling anxiety will also give me the tools to cope with that anxiety and to eventually overcome that anxiety. So we use our belief and our iman in qadr. And this is if you look at the verses about the battle of Uhud. Again, we don't have time, but read them. Surah Al Imran. Allah Azza wa Jal uses qadr to console the believers. It would have happened. Allah is telling them. It would have happened. Don't double guess. Don't think in the past. It would have happened anyway. Allah had decreed so and so would die. You could not change it, Allah says. So our belief in qadr brings us a sense of calm and peace. The last point for the first khutbah. And that is... We firmly believe that anxiety and stress is a means of attaining Allah's reward if we channel it to connect with Allah. Any pain and stress that we feel, our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Ma yusibu al-Muslimu min nasab wa la wasab wa la ham wa la hazan." No Muslim is afflicted with any grief or stress, or pain, or anxiety, or suffering. Six adjectives he gave, six different things to describe every possible state. No pain, no anguish, no grief, no worry, no physical pain, not even a shawka, a thorn that pricks him. And he is patient, except that Allah will give him the ajr for that stress and grief. We have to understand, dear Muslims, that, that phrase when we enter Jannah, Alhamdulillah alladhi adhaba anna al-hazan, we will earn it when we overcome the stress of this world by patience in Allah. That is when the, the complete hazan will go.